a sense of this, you don't have to look at cat butthole. Uh, hi, I'm Dala, and uh, today we're continuing with the power wall build, so let's head out to the shed. Okay, so welcome to my tiny apartment shop. Uh, if you watched some of my super early videos, you might remember this space. I will put it up on screen. Uh, basically, I've worked here a bit now, uh, insulating the walls, painting everything white. I even have a new uh, electrical uh, distribution block going up here. So basically this place, it's very white, will serve as a tinkering space for me, like really nearby where I live. And this will also ho house all the batteries here. As you can see, I am building the latest blocks. So uh, I won't repeat myself in this video, so I will just skip ahead uh, until all the pieces are completed. So, and bam, welcome to the future. So we now have seven of these stacks uh, placed here under the table. And it has now come the time to join them all together to create a big 48 volt battery. And to join them together, I have employed uh, two methods. First of all, I've been using these uh, interlink uh, connect pieces, these small one copper ones. I've just stacked them, uh, many of them next to each other. But I've also run out of these, so then I have uh, created uh, custom bus bars. I've just taken some uh, long copper strips from another leaf pack, these interconnect pieces, and I've just drilled holes in them. So that, yeah, so that I can connect all the cells in parallel. So um, it's a quite long process of making all these uh, holes, just drilling holes in copper. So uh, I won't show you all. I will just maybe put up some material on screen here what it looks like. But it's a very boring process and it takes a lot of time. But now everything is done and I will just connect all the batteries in series now that I have them in parallel. So what do I mean with putting them together in series? Well, uh, these two packs, uh, the, or these two stacks here, uh, they have a, a negative, uh, this far one, and a positive here. And thanks on the same negative here and positive here. So to connect these two batteries, I just go take a cable and I go from the uh, positive side here to the negative side here. And this will bridge them together, creating four cells in series. So I will just have to make a lot of these uh, jumper cables that just transfer the power from one battery to the next. Oh, and by the way, uh, if you noticed uh, this small copper boss bar here, uh, it was just made out of necessity. This middle one is just for uh, a balancing uh, lead, since this is like one cell, one cell. So it doesn't matter that this one is quite thin compared to the rest. This is 10 square millimeters. Uh, but it's still enough just for balancing. But yeah, uh, let me get all the cables connected. Okay, so the battery is linked together and um, yeah, the polarity didn't really match here depending on the cell layout. So uh, not all of these jumps were like really clean this way. They had to, they had to cross here because yeah, the cells are two different types. They have like polarity uh, reversed on them. But if I measure from uh, left and right, I get a healthy 52 volts DC. So this is perfect for a 48 volt setup. But the battery cannot be used in this state. It is very dangerous actually to try and charge and discharge it. So now we need to go and add the BMS. 
Okay, so like I mentioned, uh, the battery will actually be a bit dangerous to use if you're not using a BMS. So let's add that. And what is a BMS, you might ask? Uh, well, the BMS is the battery management system and it keeps track of all individual cell voltages and makes sure that no specific part of the pack goes uh, too high or too low when charging or discharging. Because that could damage the cells and uh, cause a fire. So we definitely need a BMS. And uh, for this build, I'm going with a Batrium BMS. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, these Batrium kits actually talk really well with many uh, known inverters uh, already. So uh, I'll talk more about the inverter that I'm going to use, uh, but let's, let's focus a bit on the BMS here first. So this Batrium kit, I got it with also an uh, expansion board. And uh, Apart from the expansion board, it also came with a uh, shunt and it also has these individual uh, long ones. Uh, these ones are used for actual uh, balancing. So you will need one per uh, cell. Uh, so, well, uh, I thought that um, now you know what the BMS does. Uh, it keeps track of the cell voltages. Uh, it also keeps track of the temperature of the battery and you can like restrict it and everything. So this one is actually quite advanced. Uh, you can get really cheap BMSs for like 30 euros. But uh, since the BMS is such a critical component, like it, it will prevent a catastrophe from happening. Uh, I would recommend spending a bit extra money on this piece uh, just for yeah, keeping your stuff safe in the event of something going wrong. Uh, like I also mentioned in this kit, uh, before we mount this, uh, it has a shunt, or <coughs> this one I think was called a shunt one, and uh, this shunt actually, it's a very um, low resistance um, resistor, 0 0.1 ohms, so uh, you can measure voltage on both of these sides, and when current is going through it, there's going to be a bit of a, a voltage drop, and you can then calculate how much, like how many amps are going through this piece. So this one will be used for um, keeping track of how many kilowatt hours are going in and out of the battery. And um, yeah, uh, let's mount it. Okay, so welcome back to the shed. I have uh, done some uh, wiring modifications now. I've added all these uh, cell monitoring uh, tabs uh, that will plug into the long ones. And I also moved uh, these high voltage cables, instead of having them connect directly at the top, I moved them to the middle just to get some more space to, to connect up these balancing leads. So uh, let's hook up all the long ones and um, keep in mind that this is like one of these per cell. So we're going to need 14 of them because we're doing a 14S battery. Okay, now things are becoming interesting. So all the long ones are connected and there's a high frequency pitch you can hear. They are all in this uh, waiting to sync mode. I just placed them temporarily on some plastic pieces. They are quite well insulated, but I wanted to add another layer. I'll probably come up with some more permanent mounting solutions later on. But at least uh, now they are connected enough so that we can start testing. So let's hook them up to the actual uh, main unit. Okay, so I uh, wired this up uh, temporarily. I had to extend the CAN network with this uh, green-blue wire here. And it's blinking away, going crazy. I have connected it here with a wire, which is uh, running up to the table. I have the Batrium unit running. And I just fired up the setup and just plowed through it like real quickly. I was so excited. And check this out. It's displaying every single cell in the battery and it's actually doing active balancing at the moment. You can see this being indicated uh, and wow, I mean wow, what a cool and simple setup this was. So there's still some stuff to do but uh, I think we can take that for the next video. Okay so wow, simply wow. I'm having so much fun here. Uh, I feel like a kid at Christmas. Uh, so there's still lots to do here. I need to add the shunt, I need to add the expansion board, I need to tidy up all this wiring because it's still like quite loose here. 
but it's working. Uh, the system is balancing this at the moment and um, I won't go into super detail on how to do the Batrium setup because that would take like 45 to 60 minutes and that would be like a super long video and there's already great videos available on YouTube so I won't try to upload those. So um, yeah, uh, super excited. In the next video we will add the inverter, I will tidy up the wiring and uh, mm, looking forward to the inverter. So see you in the next one. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters. Bye bye.